The Lower Burial Ground Restoration Society was founded in 2008 by a group of concerned citizens to protect this important heritage site in downtown Kingston at Queen and Montreal Streets. If we could go back to 1783, we should think about this particular urban site as being empty land save for the trees and vegetation they found on it, but land with a sufficient depth of soil to allow burials. And it was on the outskirts of what would become the very small town of Kingston. Buried here in the lower burial ground, we have uh, many of the, uh, the people who were responsible for the founding of Kingston and uh, the development of it in the 1790s and early 1800s. At uh, the, the, the start of the War of 1812, for example, Kingston was growing quite rapidly as a military town and the provisioning for the ships on the Great Lakes. And so a lot of the street names that uh, when you look at names on uh, Markland, and Earl and Johnson, a lot of those families, they're all buried here in our graveyard. Also a lot of interesting uh, characters uh, who, uh, whose names you'd recognize, such as the uh, family of Molly Brandt. We have Joseph Forsyth, an important merchant in those times. We have the Hagermans, we have Stewarts, Cartwrights. We have uh, also uh, a lot of people whose names aren't so well known, but were very uh, essential to the development of Kingston as, as a, a key settlement at this end of Lake Ontario. One of the families prominently connected with the early history of Kingston was the Stewart family. The Stewarts, two generations, were ministers at St. George's Cathedral. At the time that the st first Stuarts were buried here, there was no large St. Paul's Church right beside their monument, but rather, again, the open graveyard. We don't know for sure when the stone walls that you see here were built, uh, but probably in the 1840s. It was a time of importance because Kingston was the capital of the United Province of Canada, and the Stuarts wanted in some way to commemorate their family, their genealogy. The design, again, we don't know the architect, but we think it was influenced by a, a pattern book that was put out in England in 1838 on monument design uh, by a person named Totti. And from that, you see the battered walls. Notice how the elements, the vertical elements, go in towards the top. And this was part of the classical style derived from Greek architecture. First, we had to catalog all the stones, figure out all the, the dimensions of the arch. All that had to take place before we could take it apart and actually start putting it back together. Many of the stones had to be repaired and patched. We also had to do the whole project with block and tackle. So uh, we couldn't get forklifts or things like that into the cemetery because of the potential damage it could cause to the burial grounds. So everything had to be done the old fashioned way. There are many other significant monuments in this urban graveyard, not the least of which is this wonderful one here in which the ironwork surrounding it has survived. Now, this was fairly common to have iron enclosures to protect monuments, but most of them have disappeared, uh, not the least because of in the world wars that the iron was melted down for weaponry. So we should really treasure this one, which is in reasonably good condition around an early 19th century gravestone. So we have the uh, Stuart Monument here, and it's a uh, family grave area or site. Um, it's actually a beautiful stone job. It, it, it's uh, made very beautifully. The, the craftsmanship is amazing on this. As you can see, like these are one big stone, and it's been divided in here. Really high-end craftsmanship, and it was done 140, 150 years ago. And so it's really, uh, we have a lot of respect for that type of work or the craftsmanship that went into this. And uh, we've been working with Mr. Thompson to uh, restore this. It needs some pointing. There's a few problems here and uh, a few things on the inside and bulge and everything. And there's some, um, also some monuments in there that, that need a little bit of work too. Uh, Brian's has a fair bit of experience with uh, 
working with the monuments, so I think he's gonna, him with some other people are gonna look after that, or we're gonna, we're moving in that direction. We're all kind of still in the planning stage now. And, uh, but it's a beautiful monument. It really needs to be restored. Well, you can probably hear all the traffic noise here. We're at the corner of Queen and Montreal Street, and it's uh, astounding the amount of traffic goes by here in a day. And that was one of the reasons why our wall, originally built in 1799 by Francis Xavier Rochelle, famous stonemason of the time, uh, we had problems. Uh, even back in 1937, they had to do some major work on, on the wall because the vibrations of the traffic along Montreal Street uh, were disturbing the foundations. And so this year, our, our project, which we've just concluded, was the rebuilding, restoration of our 1799 wall and uh, very successfully done thanks to Upper Canada Stonehouse Group and a lot of very generous donations from people in the community who are concerned about preserving this important piece of our heritage. And now our next project will be the restoration of the Stuart Lair, a very particular kind of uh, cemetery architecture which you've heard about from Jennifer McKendry. But uh, in, in this lair are buried 11 members of the Stuart family. John Stuart, of course, you know, the founder of the Anglican Church in Upper Canada and uh, very important loyalist. His son, uh, the, who was the Archdeacon of Kingston, George O'Kill Stuart, and all of their, their wives, their children, and uh, a very significant piece of, of architecture and in terms of the, the people who were buried here who were important to Kingston history. So we'll be mounting a campaign uh, throughout the year because we hope that by next summer, we'll be able to restore this monument to its uh, full glory. One of the important aspects of St. Paul's Cemetery is that it's a traditional intramural graveyard that is within the walls of the city. So many of these have disappeared because of development throughout the province that this has become a great rarity. They are now under high rises, not even recognized as once existing. To have this still open space in the middle of Kingston is something that is a great contribution towards Ontario architecture and towards cemetery design.